my name is Matthias Runge, and I'd like to talk to, uh, a little bit uh, about OpenStack. Um, just for me, how many of you have heard about OpenStack? Great. And how many of you have already used OpenStack? Okay. That's nice. Um, I work as a software developer at Red Hat, and I'm a um, core member of um, OpenStack Horizon. What this means, um, I will talk about later. Um, what is OpenStack? OpenStack is a full software stack to build infrastructure as a service. Um, and of course, it's free, free software. Uh, license as uh, under the Apache license. It's um, completely built in Python, which is, which is not completely true. We have some parts of uh, in other languages, sci like um, JavaScript or so, but under 5%. Um, it's run by a community of contributors. Um, and to, to get a roof, Above this, uh, we have uh, the OpenStack Foundation for marketing and so on. We do time-based releases. Um, the eighth release will be released on, in April, um, and the latest snapshot for the um, Grizzly release uh, was uh, released on Friday, so it's really fresh. Um, those names like Grizzly or Folsom or so are uh, decided by vote uh, by the community. It's made of single words, um, at least 10 characters long, and those words are taken from places where the development summit takes place, so near the places. Um, the development summit for this um, Folsom release was in San Diego, and Folsom is also in San Diego. Um, Grizzly is a um, place somewhere in Portland, and as a somewhere in Oregon, and um, the development summit will be in Portland also. In, yeah. No, it's uh, Havana. It's an unknown region somewhere in Oregon. Oregon. So we have um, the OpenStack Foundation consists of three major blocks, um, the tech committee, to decide what we want to do and how we want to do and so on. It's made of, um, in total, 13 um, elected members, eight uh, project tech leads, and uh, five other persons. Then we have uh, the board of directors, um, also elected in, in total 24 people. And we have the user committee um, consisting currently of one person, but this will change likely in the near future. And um, the user com committee um, should repre represent users at the other um, rounds. So, uh, users should have an influence on decisions of the tech committee and also on the board of directors. So, speaking about code, uh, OpenStack is perceived as, mostly perceived um, outside as a project made by Ubuntu or Canonical. If we look at the contributors, we have about 10 top contributors, and five of them are working for Red Hat. Um, we have Anne Gentle. She works directly for the OpenStack community, but uh, Steve Hardy, Mark McLaughlin, Zane Bitter, Steve Baker, and Dan Prince are employees at Red Hat. And if you look at the chart broken down, so these, uh, these charts I show you are pretty fresh. It's uh, for the last uh, release or for the last half a year of development. And we see uh, 
broken down by companies, uh, Red Hat is a top contributor there. So if you think OpenStack is pretty cool, I'd like to test it. You could do this on a plain Fedora. You have two methods, um, OpenStack demo install, and also a new installer we call PackStack. It's pretty fresh, fresh and currently mostly tested on RHEL or CentOS, Scientific Linux, and so on. Um, PackStack is a text-based installer. As um, OpenStack demo install is it uh, OpenStack demo install is also a text-based installer. OpenStack demo install just installs on a single um, host. You could take a VM or so. Um, PackStack is intended as a insta installation method to install on several hosts. You could also install on a single host. Um, yeah, you, you could, uh, for test, uh, you, you could use uh, real hardware on and also VMs um, as it's intended for development purposes. And also there's a little script called uh, dev, dev stack, checks out everything from GitHub and uh, configures it and um, you are able to run um, OpenStack and develop for OpenStack in about five minutes or so. So if you think OpenStack is really cool and um, ah, nasty, I found a bug, I'd like to fix it, um, then you would check out the project from GitHub. In best case, you'd file also a um, bug report uh, or write a blueprint, something like a proposal, what you would like to fix or what you would like to enhance uh, for OpenStack. Then you change the source, run tests on it. We have extensive tests uh, included in the source and uh, to, be, to, to get um, a patch uh, into the source code, you need, have, uh, you need to have unit tests also. And yeah, then you submit your change for review in Garrett. Um, there will, we have a Jenkins uh, continuous integration to run um, those checks uh, and tests. And um, then your um, code will be re reviewed. Um, everybody can review, but only core members of projects can also approve your code to be that good that it could uh, merge into the main tree. And we have the policy, if you are using, for example, Falsum and find a bug in Falsum, you need to fix it in the master tree first, which will be Grizzly. And then you can backport your change to Falsum release. This is like um, the Garrett thing would look like. You, you see the patch and uh, also you see in, in this example uh, three patch sets. So there has been discussion on the patches and um, the committer got feedback. And uh, so um, when the patch will be merged, uh, the third patch set will be merged eventually. Um, I know you like pictures. This is a conceptual architecture. We have several um, major components of OpenStack. On this um, picture, you have one, two, seven. But we, we have also many, at, at least uh, two larger projects currently not integrated in OpenStack. So they are called um, incubated um, projects. They will become um, part of OpenStack in the near future. I, I will be talking about later. And um, we have some, uh, I, I, I will be talking about those um, uh, components uh, later. This, I, 
I, small picture, I just have for illustrations. So, so the uh, components are talking via RESTful API uh, to each other, and they are also intended to be run independently. So start, um, it, it's not um, really necessary to, to have a um, start dependency. <clears throat> so uh, talking about the components, we have um, something, uh, it's called Nova. It's a kind of centerpiece of OpenStack because it uh, provides um, compute uh, power. At, um, in our case, uh, in Fedora and also in RHEL, it uh, talks to libvirt, but we have also um, other um, hypervisors supported as um, Hyper-V, who, who would use that, or Zen, or um, uh, VirtualBox, and so on. And we, we have um, vendors providing other hypervisors uh, to OpenStack as contributors. So that's why we have some code from Microsoft in OpenStack. Nova handles um, spawning and destroying um, VMs and also in nice features like injecting SSH keys and um, um, plugging um, block devices into those uh, VMs. Um, in Essex on, and also in the Folsom release, it, codes, uh, in, it includes a uh, volume service. We separated um, during the Folsom release, but it's still built in. It's um, currently split out, out of the code and renamed to Cinder, but in the um, Folsom release, we have two volume services doing basically the same, named differently. And also, we will have uh, talk about Nova at 12.30 by Nicola. And he will dive deeper, I think so. So, to spawn a VM, you, you need an um, image service, like, uh, which is called Glance. Um, it's, it handles uh, registering, discovering, and retrieving virtual machine images. It supports many, many um, formats like uh, two cow, uh, cow, cow uh, two or um, VMDK and so on. And um, it has um, several um, backends to, to object stores. So it's just um, to um, talk to Nova and on the other side, for example, to talk to Swift or a, a, a backend. And it's um, um, intended to operate totally independently. So you could also use it um, without Nova if, if you have a use case for this. Then we have OpenStack Swift. It's, um, it's an implementation for an ob object store, but not, um, you, you, you don't need to use it. So if, if you don't have a use case, you, you don't need it. It's um, <laughs> highly scalable and uh, um, it just stores objects and um, dis dis distributes it uh, through your network. Um, it's comparable to Amazon S3. Uh, um, it has um, several service components and um, also as any other um, OpenStack service, you could use it standalone. And I've seen uh, use cases for this. So then we have um, Cinder, which is our block storage, earlier called no N N Nova Volume. It presents um, your machine's uh, block stor storage uh, through um, iSCSI. And if you have a um, database uh, application or so, um, this is uh, the storage you want to use. Um, yeah, and um, if uh, you spawn a virtual machine and uh, click in the um, 
dashboard, um, I, I would like to also connect uh, this storage to my VM, then uh, the infrastructure will take care of it. So you, you don't need to configure something there. We have a large project uh, which is currently under, under incubation. It's called Quantum, and it's uh, intended to handle networking. And um, it's a really, really huge project because we have so many contributors, and this is really, really many features. Um, in a simple case, it just uh, provides your machine's IP addresses through DHCP, but also it um, does some, something like routing, and um, it can also talk to your routers through a defined uh, protocol named OpenFlow. Um, we have several contributions from Cisco, for example, and um, other network, store, uh, network um, um, device um, vendors to get, their pro um, to, to get their devices supported by OpenFlow and supported by um, Quantum. Um, you have something like, um, we, we call it um, floating IPs. Um, you just spawn your machine somewhere and you, you don't need to know, know where your machine is spawned because the network will take care of it. But if um, the host where your machine is running um, needs to update it or something like that, um, you just move your machines to some other host and the network will take care of it. And um, you have a single um, IP address or could have a single IP address um, to be exposed uh, to external called um, floating IP addresses. So you, you won't uh, see that your host is moved to another host or uh, you won't see that your machine is moved to another host. Um, you, you can still um, SSH to your machine during uh, your machine is uh, moved. So it's a kind of live, live migration. And also, um, if you are a customer um, to a company selling you services through OpenStack, you could um, define your network by yourself. Um, and also, every customer could have a, a machine running on a local, uh, on an internal IP address like 192.168.1.1 192, uh, or so, and the network in this case, Nova will take care of uh, separating those uh, services. Uh, we have, um, um, if you remember those um, large picture um, in, uh, earlier, we have a service keystone. It was um, on the bottom of the page. It provides uh, you a central dictionary um, of services and users and also mappings between them. Who is allowed to do this um, is on, and on the other hand, um, if, if you're a user, you could uh, ask your, your keystone, um, I'm user, blah, 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 um, am I allowed to do this? And also give me a list of service APIs. You could plug your um, keystone into LDAP um, to, um, and also, uh, you have uh, multiple um, authentication standards, um, la su such as password authentication, token-based pass um, token authentication, and so on. Um, I think I have forgotten something. We have um, two projects currently under incubation. The first one is called HEAT. It's um, mainly intended to deploy machines or uh, groups of machines uh, in your cloud. Uh, for example, if you want to uh, use something like MediaWiki or so, you need a web server and you need a database host and uh, maybe a memcached and a load balancer or so. And you could uh, use HEAT to deploy all those images um, and have those um, services uh, installed and also um, plugged together. 
And also, an, another feature in heat is you could use it uh, to get high availability. This is um, it, um, targeted for the future, but uh, it's also on the development plan. And a sealometer is an, another really young project to get meterings, um, measurings on all kinds of services. And you could also ask a sealometer, is my host up? And uh, how many compute time did it uh, use? And it's, it's intended um, to be used for uh, billing information, for example. And um, it's also intended uh, to be used as single uh, metering um, um, instance. So you, you don't need to extend Nova and uh, Horizon and so on uh, to get your, your data. It's extensible via plugins. Last project, it's um, Horizon. It's, it takes, it's our um, dashboard. It consists mainly of two parts. We have the dashboard itself and a framework called Horizon to, be, to uh, implement the dashboard. So <laughs> um, Horizon, or better, dashboard, takes its configuration from uh, Keystone. If um, you encounter any errors, uh, you need to look at Keystone. Um, it's um, upgrade or downgrade uh, um, compatible, so if you're running a Folsom infrastructure and um, would like to test, for example, a, a Grizzly Horizon, it's totally possible. It's 100% comp compatible. It's not the case for all other um, OpenStack um, parts. You, you cannot have um, um, a Horizon Keystone and uh, um, Grizzly uh, Nova, for example. Uh, pro probably not. We have, um, in the Folsom uh, release, we have uh, support for Nova, Cinder, Glance, and Swift. And uh, for Grizzly, we will have basic quantum support. Quantum is, is not a, a core project of uh, OpenStack, so it's just optional. Um, if you want to use quantum, you need to use uh, the command line interface currently um, in OpenStack. This is how Horizon or the dashboard looks like. You're, you're logging into your instance. You're, um, you, you have a list of projects or uh, you're allowed to use. Yeah. For example, um, I'm logged in as a demo user here and I have also a project called demo but I could also um, use other projects with other rights. So uh, I, I could have um, um, a project uh, and could be allowed to um, change the, net, the network and in another project I'm not allowed to do this. This is completely handled uh, through Keystone. And also you, you see a basic uh, usage summary there but it's not, it's not coming from Keystone that is a service uh, from Nova currently. But it will um, change likely. Um, Horizon is intended as a self-service function. You could log into this website and spawn your virtual machines. So just as, as ex an example, you um, name a machine, choose an image uh, to, uh, to, to use, um, and uh, then your image will be uploaded to Glance, and uh, later you could uh, launch that image uh, also through the dashboard. You provide something like a name for that um, instance, uh, the network to be used. Um, you could specify um, SSH keys to be injected into your image so that you are able to SSH into your image. And uh, when you are ready, you click launch and that's it. It takes a little time on this machine here, which is just a 
custom um, laptop. It takes up to five minutes or so if you're uh, using a reasonable number of um, instances. And um, you, you see those uh, three mach instance uh, machines are just spawning and uh, also they got uh, IP addresses. <clears throat> if you're interested in how these machines behave, you, ha you could click on each machine and uh, get a, a boot lock and also a VNC console on your dashboard here. You could uh, create a, a volume, um, in this case, uh, uh, one gigabyte volume, um, which is created in uh, Cinder, and uh, the services uh, b um, below uh, create an iSCSI target, and uh, you could uh, um, associate this um, volume with the running instance, and uh, it, it will be uh, magically appear in that in, in instance. So, what to do, uh, what to expect in the future? We will, ha we will um, have extensive networking support um, for Horizon because we will get uh, Quantum in, as, as, as a core po project in uh, OpenStack. Uh, we have some ideas, f um, speaking of Horizon, we have some ideas how to um, display um, heat features in uh, Horizon um, and also Celometer. We, we will get those both um, projects um, integrated in OpenStack, or better integrated in OpenStack. If, if you are just downloading the latest um, stable release, uh, Falsum, uh, both uh, uh, projects are not included. Um, I've seen uh, an interesting talk um, on the developer mailing list about disk encryption. So <laughs> you basically boot from a disk, uh, provide a key, and are able to use that um, disk later. So um, speaking of security, um, if somebody else um, gets your machine image, he can't do anything with it because um, he hasn't uh, the key. And also, we had a little discussion about provisioning of bare metal nodes, nodes to be used as compute nodes for open, OpenStack, um, using OpenStack, in, in this special case, using heat to provide uh, uh, provision uh, those nodes. So you could use OpenStack as uh, a management uh, tool for OpenStack infrastructure, for its own infrastructure. Yeah, that was quick. Questions? Um, not a question, I just wanted to say about heat. Uh, it got, in, I mean, out of incubation. It's, it's got promoted. And, uh, it got promoted like a week ago or something. I think it was, it was Wednesday. I'm not yeah, really yeah, yeah. Sure. and it was a project started by Red Hat and mainly contributed to by Red Hat. So, yeah, a bit of showing <laughs> off, I guess, not a question. <laughs> yes. Can Keystone be configured with Horizon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, um, of, of course. Um, Horizon gets its uh, configuration from Keystone, and uh, you ask uh, Keystone. Um, what are my service endpoints? Uh, how do I reach Nova? And because services um, provide a RESTful API, Horizon uses this uh, RESTful API um, to talk uh, to Nova and Cinder and so on. And uh, Keystone just provides those uh, service URLs. I guess I meant, what tool is used to configure Keystone itself? Ah, you could use uh, Horizon, of course, to configure Keystone. But, 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 but uh, the initial configuration uh, you, you do, for example, by Packstack as an um, installation tool. You, you, you cannot use Horizon to install on and configure um, OpenStack itself. Yes? You said Quantum will provide some kind of a high availability. What actually mean by this? Because 
the motor I imagine under high availabilities, usually some, for example, sectional replication, and it needs to be supported by application you are running on top of that. Yes, that's, that's right. Uh, um, the question was uh, how quantum would uh, provide uh, high availability. Uh, high availability should be provided by uh, heat and not quantum. We, we use quantum uh, for load balancing, for example. Um, but uh, you are totally right. Um, we, we just can check, uh, is uh, this instance running? And if it's not running, we need to spawn a new instance. But um, of course, if uh, a machine crashes consistently, we, we will lose data in, the, in this case. There's nothing um, OpenStack can do about it. Yes, please. Um, we have at least three types of storage. <laughs> we have um, GLANs as image uh, registry, and um, these images are used to start up um, virtual machines. And we have also um, uh, Cinder, or Cinder as a block storage, and Swift as a backend storage for Cinder or Glance. And we could use Glance, to, uh, for example, to snapshot running uh, instances uh, and provide this instances uh, as a new um, template uh, for other machines. So uh, you probably mean uh, Glance as a project. We have something like uh, um, Im images and snapshots. And this is basically uh, managed through Glance. You, you have those images to be started. And also, you could use snapshots to start a new, uh, new machine. Anything else? Yes, please. Could you show this third diagram again? It's a bit hard to remember the names of the projects. Of, of course. And also, these names are not the um, names in um, the project, but uh, names for um, uh, the usage. Yes, please. just have basic uh, support for quantum in Packstack, I think. I'm not, I'm not really sure. It actually, it, it, it is based on Paulson's version, so it doesn't have any support for quantum yet, but we're working on it. Um, it actually uses Nova Network right now. How is it to install it? Sorry? How is it to install it? Oh, well, you just generate a, an answer file which has the answer for all live questions, it will ask if you don't have that file. And that's it, you just run it and it does everything for you. It actually SSH into the machine and just installs all the packages and applies some puppets to manifest, sorry, manifest to it and that's it. So it's just running one single <coughs> thing. So and that's the answer file. Yeah, I, I just used to um, insto install the OpenStack on a virtual machine here on my laptop um, and used um, Packstack uh, to do this. And what you see here is uh, how that answer file looks like. So you could edit that answer file and uh, reuse it uh, to reinstall or reconfigure. And what Packstack does is um, it uh, uses Puppet as backend uh, to configure your hosts. 
And in this special case here, uh, I, I just have one single host, but of course, Packstack can handle that and can use multiple hosts or many, many hosts. And um, OpenStack installations can grow qu quite, or c can, be get, uh, can get uh, quite large. A uh, hundred thousands of nodes is not a problem. And it, it's intended to get so large. Rack space is running drunk. Their cloud is open stack and they're running like one week old drunk. So it's pretty much production. Yes, please. You said the releases were time based. What's the time frame? Like every six months? Uh, every six months. And coincidentally, um, it's released when Ubuntu is released, which, which causes Mark Shuttleworth to say, uh, OpenStack releases like Ubuntu because it's an Ubuntu project. <laughs> and um, we have, um, b because of those uh, time-based uh, releases, uh, we, we, you're sure to get a new release, but you're not sure if your fi feature may get into that release or not. Yes. I think we're finished, right? Thank you very much.